this is a good place to start where we left off. This is the 12th PowerPoint out of the 64 that we have on Chapter 1. And uh, we can start out again in our introductory statements by mentioning there was a guy um, in the late 1800s named Rudolf Virchow, who is the most respected man in pathology. He's the father of pathology. And he said something that was uh, even more astounding than the other guy who said E equals MC squared around the turn of the century. His name was Rudy Virchow. And the spectacular thing that he said is that all diseases are the results of visible cell abnormalities. As simple as that sound, it, it really is the foundation for all of modern uh, disease sciences. And uh, that's why we love them. I uh, also love Dr. Kumar, who you see in the corner of the picture, because he's the man who wrote your book. And uh, if it wasn't for him, 90% uh, of the medical schools in the world would not have a uh, terrific textbook. Another way to define disease is to think of it in a functional basis as well as anatomic. Uh, I personally am a anatomy head and not a physiology head. Uh, so I kind of think in terms of structures, visual changes, but you can also think of diseases as a disturbances of this thing that you are very, very familiar with called uh, steady state or homeostasis of body uh, systems. Uh, we're going to talk about cell death, uh, and we're going to define it as either being due to normal replacement processes called apoptosis, or premature death due to a variety of uh, influences, which we call um, nasty, and it's called necrosis. So if your cell dies because it's supposed to die, uh, and, uh, and be replaced by another normal cell. That's the process of apoptosis, and necrosis is an untimely death. But remember, it's a spectrum. So there are some types of apoptosis that are associated with disease processes as well, in which the process is hastened up. And I'm not going to bother you with all of the crazy biochemistry uh, about that. Uh, hopefully, you've had that already. We're all going to talk about the Plasia brothers. If you want to think of the seven plasia brothers, like the seven dwarfs, you can. Uh, some, uh, the most common plasia brother is hyperplasia, which is defined as an increase in number of cells, thereby increasing the size or weight of a tissue or organ. Hypoplasia, H-Y-P-O, is just the opposite. It's a decrease. And an ex extreme hypoplasia, uh, is called aplasia, or without growth. I guess you might consider normal plasia as the steady state, although the term is rarely used. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about metaplasia, or the replacement of one type of normal tissue by another type of normal tissue, usually due to uh, influences which uh, require that a certain area be more adaptive and therefore have a different type of cell. The term dysplasia, uh, except for pediatrics, which is a completely different dysplasia, the term dysplasia refers to abnormal cells, which may very well give rise to malignancies. Uh, frankly, malignant patterns of growth <clears throat> is called anaplasia. And often in the literature, you'll see the term frank anaplasia, uh, just meaning, you know, stark anaplasia. It's not that frank was one of the seven dwarfs. So uh, let's talk about hypoplasia. And hypoplasia is uh, decrease in number of cells. If this is a normal adrenal gland where your cortex is about one millimeter thick, Hypoplasia is less than a millimeter because there are fewer cells and therefore smaller weight to the tissue or organ. Hyperplasia is the opposite. Here, the uh, yellow cortex is greater than a millimeter, so it's increased. So you can always think of hypoplasia and hyperplasia as being exactly opposite processes, and aplasia is often used in lieu of hypoplasia, and it means uh, complete lack of growth or extreme hypoplasia. Uh, let's talk about the trophy brothers now. 
trophy does not refer to uh, multiplication of cells, but increase in size of cells. So a tissue or a organ that is hypertrophic is not large because of increased cells. It's large because the cells are all bigger. Similarly, hypoplasia would be decrease in size of tissue or organs because of a decrease in the size of the cells. And actually, hypotrophy is a rarely used term. Uh, almost always the term atrophy is used. And of course, we also have uh, dystrophy, which is a special word which I'd rather not define now because it has various uh, meanings. Uh, especially uh, in regards to uh, pediatrics as well. Let's talk about hypotrophy, decrease in size of cells, rarely used term. More likely, atrophy is used, and it's shrinkage in uh, cell size due to loss of cell substance. What causes atrophy? Well, classically, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that do. For example, if you take the muscle as the prime example, if the muscle has decreased workload, the cells will get smaller, the myocytes, the muscle cells, <clears throat> the muscle fibers. And therefore, that's one cause of atrophy, simply because you don't have to pick up 300-pound uh, uh, weights anymore. Now you've got a job that's only uh, 30 pounds, so your muscle cells get smaller. If you denervate a muscle, it will atrophy on the basis of denervation. So denervation is another adjective you could put before the word atrophy. Any uh, tissue, structure, organ that gets decreased blood flow may very well uh, atrophy as well and shrink due to the decreased uh, uh, size of the cells. Therefore, decreased nutrition uh, would be another cause of atrophy. Uh, aging often is uh, involved with atrophy, particularly in endocrine glands. So if the normal thyroid gland weighs between, let's say, uh, 10 and 25 grams, you'll notice that in uh, elderly people, uh, that range might be between 5 and 15 grams because often organs uh, involute with aging and that is another form of atrophy. Sometimes uh, mere pressure on a, a tissue or organ such as a tumor or physical pressure can cause uh, atrophy as well. These are the classic types of atrophy. Let's talk about an extremely important concept called metaplasia. Metaplasia is a substitution of one normal cell or tissue type for another and the classic and usual type of metaplasia is replacement of squamous, I'm sorry, columnar epithelium by squamous. However, it could go the other way around, or there could be a lot of other possibilities. So let's say this little boundary line here is the uh, line of demarcation between the cruel outside world, which has squamous because it's uh, multi-layered, and a single layer of columnar. Well, if these cruel influences cross this line and influence the uh, columnar single cell area, this could metaplase or react by developing squamous cells. So squamous metaplasia is very, very common in the usual type of metaplasia of all the squamocolumnar junctions, like in the cervix, like in the gastroesophageal junction, like in the rectoanal uh, junction as well. Uh, Let's just say one word about cell death, and then we'll end it here because we're coming close to our um, limit, at 10 minute limit. Let's talk about cell death. Let's just remember one thing and then we'll pick it up in the next lecture. Uh, you could spend the rest of your life thinking about death, but don't think of it as death. Just think of any irreversible process. Thank you very much.